Today I'm going to make a Christmas cake. So here are all the ingredients. First of all, you're going to need 16 ounces of sultanas and uh, 14 ounces of raisins, 6 ounces of class A cherries chopped, 3 ounces of mixed peel, grated rind of one lemon, level teaspoonful of nutmeg, quarter of a level teaspoonful of mixed spice, quarter of a level teaspoonful of cinnamon, and a slight pinch of salt, 8 ounces of sugar, 10 ounces of self-raising flour, 6 ounces of margarine or butter chopped, 4 large eggs lightly beaten. Right, we need to heat the oven up to approximately 140. I'm afraid this is an electric oven so I don't know what the gas is, you'd have to work that out for yourself. Right, I'm going to now melt the butter. which is going to be fairly low and uh, we'll leave that to melt off and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Now we'll put the dry ingredients into the bowl. Firstly we'll put the fruit we will then put the I say sherries. A mixed peel. The lemon rind. sugar and lastly the flour. Now we're going to start mixing the dry ingredients together. The reason to do it this way is so that all the fruit gets well and truly coated with the sugar and the flour and therefore it doesn't end up in the bottom of the cake when it's cooked. It must be well mixed. Butter's nicely melted now, so we'll stick that in and start mixing. And the reason I put the butter in first is because if I put the egg in and then the butter, it's liable to curdle the egg. So we mix it nicely. in a bit once we've got that all nicely mixed we then pour in the egg and do the final mixing both a scooping and a cutting motion so that everything mixes nicely. Right, now the mixture is nicely mixed up. All we've got to do now is to uh, stick it in the cake tin and then straight into the oven. Right, this is cake tin. It's a approximately 8 inch cake tin, it's 3.5 inches deep. It has been greased, it has uh, baking parchment in the base which is also greased and another piece of baking parchment which will go on top of the cake once I've put the mixture together. So 
Without further ado, I shall now put the mixture into the baking tin. Then press down a slight indent in the centre, try and make it fairly level all the way round. The idea of the indent in the centre is so that when it goes in the oven and starts cooking, it doesn't rise too much at the top and you get a nice, reasonably flat cake. Now I'm just putting the other piece of baking parchment on the top just lightly pressing it down and we then take it over to the cooker which is now up to a nice heat this will go in the centre of the oven and it will stay in the oven for roughly three hours by which time hopefully it will be cooked Three hours is gone, it's now the moment of truth to see whether it's cooked or not. Oh, quite hot. It's quite good. What we'll do, we'll stick this through the centre. If it comes out dry, it's cooked. Yep, it's perfect. We hope. Turn the cooker off. off. Oh, that looks quite good. And I'm going to stick it on a wire rack to cool. Piece of baking parchment, and that is the finish. Cake has been left overnight to cool down. I'm now going to show you how I feed the cake, which is the next stage. I have here a skewer which I poke into the cake, not right away, otherwise, it will go out. So, I always use brandy, but you can use whiskey or you can use rum. My favourite is brandy. What I now do is put one large tablespoon full of brandy, sprinkle it over, spread it out. This is now left for approximately a week or 10 days. Sound like brandy. Um, and you carry this on. The cake is best if it's left to mature for at least a couple of months. So that is that. Um, hopefully, if you keep watching, we'll do another video on how to put the marzipan and the icing on slightly later on. Cheers folks, see you all next time.